The drying up of the Great Salt Lake is beginning to have significant economic consequences. And now a big mineral company is calling for no further delays in a plan to punch through a causeway that's acting like a gigantic dam. Science and Nature Specialist John Hollenhorst has the story. The Union Pacific Railroad Causeway has divided the Great Salt Lake since 1959. Several years ago, the railroad closed two failing culverts. That created two very different lakes. The south arm gets all the incoming fresh water from three rivers. The north arm gets almost none. It's become extremely salty, and evaporation is shriveling it up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Dark Side Phil here, and welcome to another live review. I'm actually doing this review immediately after completing another game that I just finished on stream. This time around, the name of the game is Extinction from Iron Galaxy. And you may say, that name kind of sounds familiar. Yeah, they're the, the same studio who was involved with games like Killer Instinct and the like in the last uh, several years. So, Extinction, full disclosure... I received a review copy of the game. Just want to let you guys know that up front. I didn't actually buy the game. But this game is priced at $60. Full retail price. What is Extinction? Well, Extinction is a game that combines many different kinds of genres and ideas from other video games and pop culture. Think the world design and graphical style of World of Warcraft. Okay? With the plotline of Attack on Titan. Giant orcs. Much like the Titans in that that franchise, are attacking humanity and destroying their towns and citizens and basically trying to end humanity, okay? You are uh, sent number one, rescuing civilians. Throughout these open world maps in Extinction, there are civilians who need to be rescued from the incoming hordes of enemies, and they're all just standing near these kind of crystal pylons going like this, completely just defenseless. It's your job to try to evacuate them by fighting enemies around them and stopping them from being attacked and then holding down a button to have them summoned away. Okay, that's one kind of gameplay in the game. Then there's the standard mini enemies called jackals. There's different kinds of jackals that you'll fight during the course of the game, including a little one that just looks like a standard green orc. You hit him a couple times, he dies. There is a more powerful version that throws projectiles, a little bit more health. Hit him a few times, he'll die. Then there's a super powered one that's big and red these are really powerful and they'll hit you with super armor you try to hit them they're going to punch right through your attacks so you got to be a little bit more you know wary of how to fight them dodge around a little bit you know kind of stick and move stick and move and then there's the vultures which are flying enemies enemies that have wings they're pretty weak you only hit them a few times they'll die but they can be annoying because they attack from the air four types of standard enemies that's it there's nothing else in the game standard enemies besides these guys now how do you kill them? Well, there's two kinds of attacks in the game. There's either combos, which you mash a, an attack button to do different combos. You can either just mash it repeatedly to get like a four or five hit combo. If you hold down the button, you'll do a launcher, which can then lead to an aerial juggle. Or if you stagger your button inputs, you'll do different attacks. So, for example, he'll do a slash and then a big wide slash that maybe hit like a several enemies that are around you. And if you delay the button inputs, you'll find you'll get better combos. However... In the course of playing Extinction, you're going to find that button is literally worthless. That mash the button combo button is worthless. Because the best attack in the game is the charge attack, which you do by holding down left trigger, targeting an enemy, and then releasing. The charge attack is incredibly powerful. It will kill the regular uh, jackal with one hit. Now, the regular jackal, in comparison, needs eight hits of the mashing button in order to kill it. So it's like mash, 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 mash. Oh, it's finally dead. Or charge, release, dead. So obviously you're always going to use the charge attack no matter what. Um, the mid-level enemy takes three hits, the bigger level enemy takes four hits, and those flying enemies only take one hit. So literally, there's a button in the game that's completely worthless. The one thing you would use it against, the little enemies, the jackals, you never use it. Just use the charge attack, you'll kill them more quickly. It's a completely ineffective strategy. So it almost seems like they had an idea for what they wanted to do with the melee combat, and then they just abandoned it completely and made this charge attack the best move in the game. Okay? So that's number two. That's the second thing that you're going to be doing, fighting these little jackals. The third thing you're going to be doing in the game is fighting giant orcs called Raveny, okay? This is the primary focus of the game, and if you saw a trailer for Extinction, it's probably what you figured the entire game was. Ginormous monsters that are trying to destroy the human uh, towns. Money into that upgrade. By the end, you'll be rescuing civilians super quick. In fact, by the end of the game, I had a group of civilians around those crystal pylons I mentioned who were getting attacked. I didn't even bother fighting the little enemies anymore. I would just rescue them because they would be rescued before the enemies ever killed any of them so there you go 
Um, and there's also various things, like, for example, always have 20% of your rage meter filled by default no matter what. Wow, that's huge, because that means you're already a fifth of the way to being able to behead, behead one of the Raveny at any time, okay? Now, damage in the game. The little guys, the jackals, will barely ever hurt you. It's really rare if you're going to get killed by one of these guys. You're going to be using the charge attack to attack them. You've got a dodge button to dodge out of the way. They're pretty much pushovers. But the Ravity, they will almost always insta-kill you no matter what. They've got big sweeping attacks with their arms that are fast and almost impossible to get out of the way of. Some Ravity have weapons like giant clubs that just double their range. When they stomp, it's an area of effect attack that damages you and stuns you. So the Ravity honestly are pretty annoying when it comes to fighting them because sometimes you'll be I took off one foot took off the other foot trying to scale oh he swatted his back I was on the other side of his shoulder but somehow area of effect damage killed me now the good news is there's literally zero penalties to die in extinction that's right there's no extra lives you don't have to start the level over there's zero penalty all that happens is you respawn somewhere else on the map and have to run back to whatever you were doing when you died and then just continue on with the game um, pretty silly, right? But I think the reason they did that is they realized if there was a penalty, the game would be too hard. Um, since there's no penalty, a lot of the times you could just rush back to the objective and try to do whatever you were trying to do, like kill that Raveny or stop the Raveny from des destroying the towers, etc. Uh, the only time I ever felt found dying annoying is during the tower defense missions, okay? When I'm trying to prevent the Raveny from destroying the towers... I need to keep them away, and if I die and I respawn somewhere else, now i got to run across the entirety of the map to try to get back to that Raveny, and it takes so long, sometimes another tower has fallen, or two towers have fallen, and I fail the mission. And in fact, hence of the budget of Legend of Korra, and I made a couple animated cutscenes, that's what they look like. Um, so, like, six to seven animated cutscenes that last one to two minutes each, plus a bunch of voice acting narration. The story is very bare-boned. It's not very robust. It's not very riveting. It's pretty much just in there for a reason to be in there, okay? So, the story, pretty much terrible, non-existent almost, and really, it's not riveting at all to keep you playing the game. So, then maybe the gameplay will keep you playing the game, right? Well, as I just mentioned to you guys, there's four kinds of missions. Kill Raveny, Tower Defense, Rescue Citizens and um, kill jackals. That's it. That's all of the gameplay of Extinction. Once you've played the game for roughly about an hour to an hour and a half, you've seen everything except some of the variations of the higher level armor that'll be on Ravity near the end of the game. But outside of that, you've seen everything the game will have. In addition, and I have not seen this in a games campaign in a long time. Ladies and gentlemen, Extinction has randomly generated stages in the campaign. What do I mean by that? I mean the objectives, the side objectives, the stage are randomly generated. It'll actually run an RNG, pro, uh, you know, thing. Oh, this is going to be a kill six Raveny stage. Your bonus objective is rescue civilians. The stage is the town. It does it randomly. It's so stupid. So every time you play a stage in Extinction, you could get a completely different experience. One person could play a stage and get all Raveny who have, by the way, the Raveny are randomly generated and so is their armor. So, oh, okay, it's a tower defense stage, but all the Raveny have no armor on them, so I can easily just chop off their limbs. I beat the stage easily. Someone else goes to play it, and the guy has middle armor you can't break and the hardest level armor. What the hell? How is that fair, right? It's not. Some people might have the easiest side objectives. Other people have the hardest side objectives. Sometimes you'll get a map that's easier. Sometimes you'll get a map that's harder. Randomly generated campaigns, I mean, they couldn't even take the time to say, oh, I'm going to design each stage intricately for the campaign, which is the meat of the game. No. Literally, it's a RNG game. So that being said, um, it's pretty pathetic. I mean, just being real with you guys. It's pathetic. It's a game that, <clears throat> if this game were being sold for maybe 20 bucks, okay? $20, the third of a price of a regular, standard retail game... Um, okay, the story's terrible and there's very little animation in the cutscenes, there's no multiplayer, there's just this single player campaign, and it's randomly generated, but the gameplay mechanics are functional, alright, alright, give it the benefit of the doubt, $20 game. They're selling this for $60, ladies and gentlemen. Now, to be fair, there's slightly more content than what I've described here with the campaign. There's also time trials. So each level of the campaign, you could time yourself to beat it within a certain amount of time and you get additional experience points. It's bad. And even worse is the fact that the game crashes on PS4. So not only is the game short, 
no multiplayer, no replayability, you're going to have to replay stages from the start if your PS4 crashes while you're playing it. Oh my god. But by far, guys, by far, the worst offense that Extinction can offer is that it's a full $60 price tag. That in 2018, any game developer would think that a game that you can beat within 5 to 6 hours, no replayability, no multiplayer, no co-op, is worth $60. I mean, they knew they were releasing a fart. They knew it. They knew they were releasing a, a stinker. They knew this game was not worth 60 bucks, and they tried to hide that fact behind nice trailers and things like that and pretend like the game was good. This by far, ladies and gentlemen, is the biggest ripoff of 2018. There's no way you can justify the amount of content that's in Extinction as being worth 60 bucks. In fact, I will go as far to say this. There was another game this year that I reviewed just like this that I said was a huge ripoff and definitely you shouldn't check it out. The name of the game was Sea of Thieves, all right? Sea of Thieves is a game that there's only three kinds of missions. It's a very shallow world. There's not a lot of people inside of the world to interact with. And, you know, but, but, a big but. In Sea of Thieves, there's multiplayer, there's co-op, okay? So, being able to play against people or cooperating with people, at least in the case of Sea of Thieves offers up a social aspect that would make you want to at least play through the game for a while. None of that exists in Extinction. Extinction is literally single player only, play this very shallow amount of content, but pay us full retail price for it. That is the worst kind of game, because it basically says that these game developers are ripping you off knowingly knowing there are tons of games out there you'll get more out of, but they're still trying to charge you full price and fool you into thinking it's just as good as all those other $60 games. Bullshit. I, in my review score right now, which I'm about to tell you, I'm going to grade this game directly off of the value you get. So, ladies and gentlemen, for $60, this game's a complete fucking ripoff, all right? In reality, for $20, if I had paid 20 bucks to play Extinction, okay, five to six hours of content with some challenges, no multiplayer, but it's only 20 bucks. Okay, that makes sense. So... I have to take a full review score of 10, which I would have given to a perfect game, okay? And I have to say they're charging $60. This game is only worth $20. $20 is one-third of 60. Therefore, to even start rating this game, I have to rate it equivalent to that. So, 100 points for $60. What's 20? 3.33. So, my review score for Extinction starts as a 3.33 out of 10. Now I've got to rate it as the fact that the game crashed repeatedly on my PS4. So let's subtract a half a point, right? <laughs> okay, the game is too shallow. The game's way too repetitive. There's RNG. Let's deduct some points, okay? Ultimately, when you look at it, is Extinction a functional game? Yes. Is Extinction a fun game? No. It's too repetitive. It's too shallow. It's not good. It's way overpriced. It's a slap in the face of modern consumers. I rate Extinction 2 out of 10. 2 out of 10. It's a stinky fart that you hope you can pass real quick and then scuttle away from it and just whew, leave it in your past and pretend like maybe you never even played it. It wasn't me, right? Get the hell out of there and just move on to something better because, ladies and gentlemen, it's a complete waste of your time. It's not worth a rental. It's not worth playing. There's nothing revolutionary about this game. Extinction is a hard skip. Do not play it or buy it. It's a waste of your time, just like a stinky fart you wish you could leave in your past. That's it. For my live review of Extinction, guys, 2 out of 10. I hope you guys liked it. Thanks for- Worthless specimen, get that ass banned.